Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, machines and machine freaks. We are loading up the Duramax. We're gonna go take this beast, hook it up to this thing. Locked and loaded. Today is going to be a very, very good day. We're gonna get rid of some scrap, make things look a little better. Then we're gonna go see the Jeep. We're gonna load the Jeep, go try to get the Jeep running. And also we just dropped the new machine hat. So today is a very, very good Friday weekend's also here. Okay, I literally just dropped off my scrap. The scrap yard is an absolute mess right now. I gotta actually go out in the road, pull off to the side, because they have so many trucks and trailers going on right now. The one guy's like, hey, you want me to take that lawnmower off the trailer for you? Because he saw I was struggling with it by myself. I'm like, yeah, sure, so he picks it up. And he's like, good luck with that Jeep, so he watches the vlogs. So 3D Machines, your day looks like there's no chaos. Where the hell's the chaos? The chaos is right here. From the scrapyard, I went to the new steel place, a steel warehouse, to pick up some steel. So I took my old stuff, basically recycled it into some brand new stuff. Unfortunately, I didn't get the same weight distribution, but uh, it is what it is. The only thing was, is I didn't have my ducks in a row. I didn't know exactly how I wanted things cut. I should have pre-ordered, so that way they just had the stuff cut, and I could just go and pick it up. So they cut half the stuff, but I, I told them I was running low on time. Well, because of that. I wanted to film my chaos and putting it on, but I just did not have the time. I ended up smashing my thumb. So I got a black and blue thumb, which is awesome, but uh, hopefully they'll still take me. I'm already 13 minutes late, and I still have 15 minutes to drive there, so wish me luck. Kyle, your trailer clipped its first trash can. It's really, really windy today, so there was like a trash can in the middle of the road. I couldn't avoid it, so uh, the trailer did it. So sorry, sorry, whoever garbage can it is, and you're welcome, Kyle. I showed up 20 minutes late, but since they're running late, I'm getting right in at, at the current time, which is really, really good. I had to go around the block because this trailer's so big. The only bad news is, aside from getting a brown or a black and blue thumb, is the fact that I lost the title to the Jeep. That This was the sign that I was supposed to pay attention and get the, the title off of the dash. I didn't do that, so it, it's, it's gone. Jeep's ready. Something tells me that those mechanics aren't going to push that Jeep in today. But look at the bright side. At least the grass is getting fed for free. I don't own any grass, though, so it doesn't help me any. It seems so empty in this garage with no toys, no Wrangler, no crush over here. It's just kind of different. Now I have to, well, I, I told Kyle that I was going to grease his trailer. If you ever, here, here's the situation. If you ever borrow something, try to bring it back better than when you took it. Like last time I gave Kyle some money, I also pressure washed it when I borrowed his trailer. This time I'm gonna grease it for him. And then I went down to Chris's shop to ask him and his father like if they could come up with some solutions for the Jeep. And when I went there to ask them for their opinions, I took them a parfait. So it's all about giving back to the people that give to you. Remember that, folks. Contribution allows this world to work the way it does. Well, it helps. The world we live in right now is crazy. I know if I don't sum this up now, there's gonna be a lot of questions in the comment section, so I'm going to go over the entire chaos story. So it all started with a scrapyard. I'm like, oh, I go to the scrapyard and get back to, for that appointment, no problem. So I go to the scrapyard. We're gonna be working on this chainsaw while I tell the story. Now that's something that a lot of people do. Now this is very, very funny. Now it's a Ranger, which is which could be a Ford product, you know, the Ford Ranger, and then it's a power stroke engine. So what's going on here? These guys are downright copying Ford. You see, it's a Danger Ranger, but it's also got a power stroke engine. Well, when I got to the scrapyard, they were really, really backed up. There's two semis, I think there might have even been three semis, a whole bunch of other vehicles. Everybody's running around with their head cut off. So the first thing didn't go according to plan. So after that, I went up to go pick up some steel. I figured, you know, I was right around the area. I'll go pick up the steel for the, the door for the camper, the truck carrier. I really didn't plan my cuts, and they have 20-foot lengths, 24-foot lengths, 10-foot lengths. So there's ways to plan your cuts so it's not only efficient for you to have them cut if they need to cut them, or how many cuts you want them to do. Six and a half hours later. The list goes on and on. Now, if you don't show up there and you don't pre-order, now you gotta wait around for the cut. So then that took a little longer than anticipated. So then that kind of put me behind schedule as well. The reason why I'm fixing this is because we wanna make some new trails for Crush, we wanna make new trails for Jake the Toilet Snake, Jason probably would be good, uh, you know, going on some trails as well. Seth, Seth has his wag Z, but YZ? No, it's not a YZ. It's a YZ250. He's got that back, so I'm sure he'd like to go on some more trails. So we need to have a working chainsaw. That's what this little box is for. We'll get into 
question here in just a second. So then the chaos continued. I went to Kyle's, picked up his trailer, dropped off my trailer, got back here, back the trailer into position. I had to move the BMW before I could get the Jeep on, got the Jeep on. It loaded very, very quickly. Well, Jason kind of wanted to look at the title a few days ago while he was here. I took the title from my truck, gave it to Jason while he was sitting in the Jeep. He then put the title right on the dash. That was not uh, that was not a good idea. It wasn't his fault, it was my fault. It's more chaos. Yes, both windows to the Jeep were down and also the tailgate was out of it, so it was no good. There, the air was just flowing in there and just getting rid of any titles that may have or may have not been on the dash. So the carburetor on this thing's funky. It doesn't allow it to get full power, so I just bought a brand new carburetor. We're gonna throw this right in there. Uh, nowadays, it's more cost effective to just buy a new carburetor than it is to go out and uh, just get it serviced. The thing that really ticks me off though is it would have only taken me 10 extra seconds to remember, hey, the title's on the dash because they were, the people at the dealership, they were running late anyways. Just when you thought we could take a break from the chaos, we could not. I had to actually take the new carburetor, this is the old carburetor, but I had to salvage parts off of this because the new one didn't come with the right armature, so the throttle wouldn't work. So far, so good. They called me. They actually had a PCM here from, I don't know, must be a vehicle of the same year that yours is or a year that it needs a PCM from. Okay. And it did fire right up, so at this point, they're just leaving it as you need a PCM, a different PCM. So it, so it fires up and it, it'll continue to run? It won't just start and die? With, with the PCM that we had here in it, I mean, they took that out. It's just kind of like a test one. Ram 3500, Altos, Ford, and Chevy at 31,000. All right, so basically, I have a 99 Cherokee. Okay. A, a four liter with an auto trans, and I plugged my PCM into it and it fired right up and ran just fine. Okay. So you need to find a PCM out of a 99 without skim which is the chip key. Okay. If you can do that, are, are you, do you plan on registering this thing or is this yes. going to be an off-road? Yes, Ye yes, I'll register it. I'd like you to. Are going to register it? Yeah, I'd like to. Well, that's not going to, you're, you're going to, you're going to have a real hard time doing that. Why is because that? Because you don't have a VIN for, for that engine to order a PCM new, which is going to turn your check engine light off. Okay. So are you trying to find a PCM that's going to, jive with your engine and read all the sensors and everything correctly and turn the light off. I guess my question is, is you guys can't reprogram that current PCM to say, you know, don't pay attention to the, the key or... No, you can't do it. Already tried it. Wow. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it. Um, I'll come and pick that thing up then. I don't really know what my options are. For the Department of Motor Vehicles, press 1. For the... <gasps> Vehicles, press one for the county. Hi, I was uh, calling to see how difficult it is to register like a homemade vehicle. A homemade vehicle or a trailer? A uh, vehicle. Hold on just a second. Alright, thank you. I don't know if this is even possible now that I think about it. I just hung up. I don't think that's a possibility, but I do have one other option. It's just something. This sucks. I'm dropping off Kyle's trailer. I do know one thing that I'm going to try with that Jeep to get it properly registered because in New York we have to plug our vehicles in and they have to pass an emissions test. So I need to get around that. Now if you have any if you have any ideas, leave them in the comment section below. The only thing I can think of is the fact that you take a PCM and uh, a wire harness and uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to think about this a little bit more, but if you have any ideas, leave them in the comment section below. I'd appreciate it. Just like that, I got my trailer on my truck now. I just serviced that. This is the steel I bought. It's right here. I got it a little wet. Hopefully it doesn't flash rust too bad, but it's a one by two channel 
uh, eighth inch thick. This is what I'm going to use for the inner portion of the doors. That stuff should work. Now when I went to the scrapyard, there was this guy who had this lawnmower in the back of his truck. And I'm like, man, we need a lawnmower at my house and I know how to fix these things. So I offered him a few bucks, got this thing. All it needs is a wheel. And I think I actually have that wheel along with the gas cap. So just like the chainsaw, I'll get something that doesn't run and turn it into something that does run and then give it to my mother. And that way the lawn gets mowed.